Hello everyone, Steve Samatino here, full-time Rentoid CEO and part-time business journalist. Today I'm here with Scott Kilmartin, who is the founder and ringmaster, is that right? It is. Ringmaster of Hall. Uh, and Hall, if you don't know, is an uber-terrific business that focuses on using recycled materials such as advertising billboards, skins, and seat belts from cars and trucks to make great things that we can see behind us, including uh, laptop covers for your MacBook and uh, backpacks and satchels and bags. So there's a lot of amazing, uber terrific, cool, groovy stuff that's nice and shiny, uh, which shows that Scott's business is a good one. It's on target with all of the macro trends in the community at the moment, including things being eco-friendly uh, and very cool stuff. But today, instead of talking about all the cool shiny stuff that everyone wants to know about with your business, we thought we'd ask Scott some questions which are a little bit hard-edged and the things that uh, everyone wanting to be an entrepreneur, the new rock stars of today, don't usually think about. So Scott, that said, I thought I'd ask you some, some uh, questions about the business. First of those being, have you ever come close to being broke, to running out of money and closing down? Yeah, I, uh, I, think, I think everyone, once you get to know them and talks about their business, after they get through the whole, we're doing fine, everything's great, uh, once they build a bit of trust in them, I'll tell you the story about how they've kind of almost gone broke. And, I've gone, almost gone broke a couple of times. Um, once, uh, fairly early doors. We've been going now for about 10 years, but it's really, it's, it, it, the first five years was a bit of a part-time, it was a sideline thing. I was doing other ventures and was involved in other things. But once we got stuck into it as a full-time gig, um, ran out of money in 2004 and was scratching around and scrambling up credit cards and lying to the banks and, and, and literally going and you know, opening three credit card accounts in, in one day so that we, back before they had good testing to know that you would have multiple credit applications. So, but even then, that was still, it, you know, it was still where I was fairly confident we were going to get through. Uh, three years ago, um, completely ran out of cash, maxed out everything I had, had no means of getting any money and was faced with the real, do I shut it down even though you feel like you're, you know, you're really close, you're kind of yeah. on the verge and um, so the big choice was uh, I kind of cut back a couple of part-time staff and we, were, we, we didn't need a lot of money, we just need a bit more day-to-day -day kind of operating capital. So I went out and got a job um, after hours. So basically I was, I was driving uh, down deep into the suburbs of Melbourne at two o'clock in the morning packing a van full of donuts and delivering donuts all over the western suburbs <laughs> from 3.30 in the morning until 11 a.m., go home, sleep for an hour, come into work and do the day-to-day -day stuff. And basically that bought in, it's funny, it's donuts, donut delivery pays it reasonably well, but it was, it was bringing in basically 1500 bucks a week yeah. that I was able to, to keep the doors open with, pay the bills, just scratch away. So yeah, come pretty close a couple of times. So you'd agree that maybe this four-hour work week thing is not necessarily true? We see Maybe there's a little bit of a gloss over the top of that. Oh, look, I think um, I think the principles of what Ferris has to say in that one is pretty good. I mean, I, I'm, I've read the book a couple of times. Yeah. Big fan of Tim Ferriss, definitely. But uh, I mean, it it does make you think in terms of how can I make more my business more automated. And, and as he talks about, not every business is, is going to suit that structure. Um, I'm trying to build a brand, so I'm probably trying to do something that he doesn't, you know, talk about that that book is based on. Um, but yeah, look, it definitely makes definitely makes you think. How can I not be as day to day involved? You know, have I mean, the classic work. You know, work more on and, and a whole lot less in. Which we even we've all read it. We all know that cliche, but we still find ourselves working in it. You know, so yeah. Okay. And if you were to give some young entrepreneurs who've got stars in their eyes about starting a cool business, something that they're not going to read about in some of the startup books or the blogs, what piece of advice would that be in terms of something that they can expect when they get their own business up and running? Yeah, look, I think that the biggest thing that often gets glossed over is people tell you the warm and fuzzy stories about how great it is and how they kind of quickly fast forward from the early days to the success days. And it really is a lot harder than, than people are going to make out. We all read about, you know, the kids in Sydney that started a business and six months later sold to Google. Um, and that's great and that happens, but it's a bit like hearing gambling stories. You only ever hear who won a million dollars. You don't hear those people that day to day lost a thousand dollars. So yeah, it, people get too caught up in the the quick, the get rich quick stuff, or the get quick, or get successful quickly stories. Yes. So, look, I think the thing is, you've got to be willing to devote an enormous amount of time. I mean, enormous amounts of time. The other difficult thing is that that I wasn't aware of until I started. And I'd run up, I'd run some businesses with other people and kind of treat them like my own. But until it was my own, they're the things that keep you up at night. It's I find it. Um, hard to turn off. You know, you're, if you're awake, you're working and you, you might not physically be in the office, but you think I've got an idea and you're scratching things down. So de-stressing and having breaks, that kind of stuff, I think um, 
you, you know, we, you'll, you'll kind of hear about having that life balance and whatever, but in the first couple of years, most of the businesses are friends of the people that I know, um, you know, talking to people I've, I've met, talking to guys like you and a lot of other people, you know, there is no time off. You are just at yeah. it all the time. You can't afford to pay people, um, so you, you're you scratching around trying to make ends meet. So big, big time investment. And also, uh, if you don't, if it's not a business where you get a lot of venture capital or you, you haven't got a, a, you know, a high net worth individual as an investor, then every cent you're going to, you can, you're going to spend on your business. Um, every money, you, every bit of money you make, you're going to invest in. So there are some times where you're not going to have any money to go out and have Friday night drinks. You yeah, haven't got yeah. hundred bucks in your pocket to go and do that. Or you've, cho- you've got the hundred bucks, but you chose to, to pay some guy to add something to your website instead. Yeah. Yeah. And, w- and once you get through the, f- the first few years, y- you definitely have periods like that again, but it becomes a bit easier because you're able to, to deal with it more. You know, I think. So you mentioned about staying up at night and things keeping you awake. What sort of things keep you awake, or what's keeping you awake right now? Uh, um, we're negotiating a lease. We're about to open a, open a, a retail store in the city called Town Hall um, in one of the little Melbourne laneways and negotiating that lease. Can we get it? Is it the right time? Um, are we stupid to be expanding when we're in a recession, you know, slash global financial crisis, slash we're not in a re- technical recession, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so earlier before we had a little tour around the place here, we we're talking about the manufacturing side and the different components of your business. And you were saying that that's some of the stuff that you maybe not your skills weren't in at the start of the business. So tell us about the areas where you feel you've got a lack in a skill base and how you are trying to uh, approach changing and improving some of that. Yeah, it's often like, you know, we all, human nature, you do what you want to do and you do what you like to do. Um, I, my, the, the stuff I'm good at is the marketing side of it, um, the kind of the product idea side of it. Pro- manufacturing initially and now what's evolved into production is definitely where um, I've struggled and the business overall has struggled. Some some of that because of the nature of the way we make things out of our materials. I mean it's a bit tricky you know, and yep. it wasn't, wasn't the company we'd go out there and kind of benchmark against because it's a little bit odd the individual cutting as opposed to the economies of scale but, but manufacturing um, probably a uh, financial aspect of it. Um, being not necessarily weak at it but being disciplined enough to constantly monitor the numbers. Um, do the whole do that end of, end of the month stuff. Often might miss a couple of months with, with you know tracking yeah. sales where you're at with with debtors and stuff. So and probably initially like debt collection, I avoid it like most people do. Now it's you know it's, it's every second Friday and I actually quite like it. Now I, I, yeah. I, it's, like it's, it's, like it's gone it. the other way around. I, okay. I'm quite going okay. Who owes this money? How do, and because you need it, you're going yeah. you know this is money that people are. I'm not their bank and uh, we've got set terms um, and we've changed our terms directly over the years to make sure that kind of we're not getting exploited. And I guess when you start out you're so happy someone's ordered some of your product you'll be you'll quite patiently wait and wait and wait to get paid where you quickly learn that if you keep doing that you'll go broke and you won't be able to pay your staff and you won't be able to pay yep. rent so you, you, I think you quickly become a little bit hard and sharper about that yeah is it fair to say that a lot of the startups are very good in the creative side and maybe some of the big uh, business discipline side is where a lot of small business people need to take some lessons yeah, look, I mean, especially if you're a, if you're a startup as one person, I think if you've got some partners, you've probably got some complementary skills. You've probably got someone that's you know, it's creative, good at sales, or whatever. You've probably got someone else that might have a bit more of a number background, maybe someone that's more of a technical background. Yeah. With me, um, because I was the sole starter, then definitely uh, I I was weak in those areas. You know, definitely did some stuff to educate, read a lot about some of those things, but but knowing about them and still doing something about them often, you still skim over it because it's hard stuff. You know, yeah. it's out of your out of your your comfort zone. Yeah. And what sort of things do you do to self-educate in the areas where you know you need to learn to help improve your business? Um, you know, wasn't at, at school, was lazy, didn't do much, didn't read a lot, um, you know, never went to university. So um, in the last few years, I'm a really avid reader now. So I, I kind of devour books, so a lot of them um, autobiography stuff, you know, yep. the, 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 the kind of usual suspects in that space. But, but also, you know, people that have uh, done unusual things, uh, that have maybe taken an idea from another industry. So those books that are part self-help, part small business, yep. part marketing, and of course online now you can jump on some blogs and, and get that stuff almost instantly. I still quite like to physically hold a book and read yeah. um, but other things, kind of short snaps, I'll definitely get off the web. Right. So you've heard it right here from the man Scott Kilmartin, the Chief Ringmaster of Hall. What you need to do is get onto the Hall website or come out here to Best Street in Fitzroy North and pick up your next MacBook sleeve to protect your nice little shiny piece of life which Scott had an interesting sign up there that said we record our lives on our MacBook the least we can do is protect our lives with something cool like this which is of course going to be one of a kind so check out the website which is hall.com.au spelled H-A-U-L 
And uh, thanks again to you, Scott, and good luck in the future. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers.